what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is day number 32 it's july the 25th 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it first thing first let's talk about all of our important levels that we have on the chart today so we have two zones up here we have one that we drew based on a consolidation zone from the pre-market and that's this zone down here towards the open and then another zone that was also based in the pre-market that's a little bit higher but that'll play a role a little bit later in the session so let's go ahead get straight into it so trade number one today i went long after seeing a higher low form at the zone support level but i need to remember to lock in good profits when they are there and that's very important when it comes to the type of day that you're trading you want to make sure that whatever day it is you have a profit taking strategy that aligns with that now last week we were in a very strong trended market where i had opportunities to take larger profit targets but this week even though we're only two days in so yesterday was the only day i had to go off of but yesterday wasn't really a big moving day like last week was so i have to assume that if yesterday that if yesterday was more of a you know i'm not gonna say a necessarily range bound day but a day where things were moving slower than usual that means that I need to go back to taking my regular profit target. So I feel like that's the mindset I should have came into this day with. And throughout this session, we'll be able to see that it was a lot of good trades that I took, but I didn't take profit where I should have. So that really ate at, you know, my overall P&L. But that's the biggest lesson I learned on trade one. You know, my entry was good. I went long based on the support of a higher low. That's my strategy right there that I was telling you guys about on uh, day 31 and day number 30 using those higher lows but you always want to remember lock in that profit at the proper at the proper level very important so then that brings us to trade number two at the top of the zone so once we got to the top of the zone i went short as prices hit the zones highs but i cut the trade before it had a chance to turn profitable now i feel like this trade right here was a little bit justified because if i just went long on trade one then that's the direction that i need to trade the zone from from this point forward because for me i don't like to trade the long side of the zone and the short side i want to pick one of them and then stick to that so when i realized that on trade two i cut the trade and even though that trade would have worked i just feel as though i made the right decision on that one because i only want to trade the zone from one side and if that's my plan i gotta stick to it so that brought us to trade number three which is pretty much what i was just saying where if I want to trade the zone, I'm going long at the bottom. So that's exactly what I did. So let's read the notes. I went long at the bottom of the zone as prices came back to retest the higher low, but my break even got hit. And sometimes in the market, that's just how it is. And a lot more times when you're trading the zone, because the thing about a zone is that, yeah, it'll move from top to bottom and bottom to top. But in that process, it does have a higher probability of coming back let's say you went long at the bottom it has a higher probability of coming back to retest that level and then move up so for my break even stop it gets triggered when it's halfway to my profit target so for trade number three once the trade was already halfway there the break even got triggered but because we're trading the consolidation zone prices do have a tendency to come back sometimes and that's just something you got to live with when it comes to trading consolidation zones with a break even stop now if you didn't want to use the break even you could keep your original profit target where it was and not move it up and trail it but that does leave you open to the possibility of losses so those are just the two things you want to weigh when you decide whether or not you want to use a break even or just keep a regular stop now for me i chose a break even because i would much rather have to miss out on some trades like trade three but on the flip side i also get to protect myself from a lot of losses if i bought at the bottom of the zone and the zone actually broke to the downside so that's my strategy right there and how i like to use that but i would suggest that you as a trader do whatever is best for you no matter which one you choose just do it the right way so sometimes for me that's just something i gotta deal with and i roll with the punches it's all good but on trade number four once we get back to the post pattern now i think that was something that i talked about last week also so check out those episodes as well now for a post pattern the first thing you want to see you want to see that tall high volume candle with a large body that's exactly what we got on this candle right below number four and if we follow it down to the bottom it lines up with this candle right here where we see significant volume so you also want it to be little to no wicks on the bottom check mark and you also want it to be little to no wicks at the top 
Now, for this one, it was a little bit shaky, but the body was big enough than the wick where I said, you know what, it's acceptable. And then on the next candle, we got that perfect square body that we look for as a continuation sign. And then once you get the close of that candle, you immediately go long. So that's exactly what I did on trade for. Now, when it comes to a post pattern, that's a pattern that you expect to use when you see when you want to see continuation. So one thing about that in today's market, I don't think this was really like a continuation entry type of market. This was more of a pullback type of pullback entry type of market where you wait for prices to come back to certain levels of support or if you're looking for the short certain levels of resistance and then you start moving into your trade. So I think it also that goes back to what I was talking about on trade one where I said, look, you got to understand the type of day that you're trading and use not only profit taking strategies that align with that type of day, but also your types of entries that you want to take needs to align with that type of day. So since today wasn't too much of a trending day, it's no surprise that this post pattern that I saw didn't work. And you know that a post pattern doesn't work when the next candle after that second candle formation does not close as a green candle. So that right there will be one of your actual biggest signals to exit. So that's exactly what I did at trade four and just got out for a small loss. And as you can see, if I would have held that trade, it would have definitely came back to retest my stop loss. So that's not good. But overall, if you look at where prices came back to, they came back to recess what used to be a previous high. So if you know what I've been telling you guys about market structure lately, that's a very, very, very important characteristic of an uptrend. You want to see prices come back and retest what used to be a previous high, which used to be, which, excuse me, which used to be resistance, but now should act as support. So we see prices bounce up and then that brings us to trade five. So on trade five, I saw a higher low and I went long after seeing prices make that higher low. But thing is, just like on my trades before, I didn't lock in my profits when they reached the top of the zone. And I got a little bit too greedy right here because I was expecting for the uptrend to continue and actually come back to the top of the zone. But what I've learned when I look back in retrospect over my trades today, Whenever you have a zone towards the top of a, a uptrended move, it's better to just take profits at the top of the zone. Because I remember one of my mistakes from a couple weeks ago was it wasn't exactly like trade five where I go long at lower prices, but I would go long as prices hit the top. Uh, well, as prices hit the bottom of the zone in expectation that the uptrend would continue and move up to the, the uppermost zone. So. It's a similar problem, but not exactly the same, but the characteristics kind of align with each other where I'm not making the right decision at the top of the zone. So when it comes to trades like trade five, even though it didn't hit my original profit target of 22 points, if it came back to a level that made sense, I feel like that's the area that I should take the profit at. So that's just a little thing I got to work on right there also. And I, I think that's something I could definitely improve on, you know. Now that I'm realizing my mistakes, I believe that that's the first part of self-improvement. Now I just got to get on the back testing simulator tonight and work on all of these things that I'm talking about. So that brings us to trade number six. That's the next trade that I took. Now at trade six, I went long after prices came back to retest a higher low. But like I was telling you guys earlier, my biggest mistake today was not taking profits at the proper levels because if I would have taken profits at the right levels on trade one, trade three, trade four, that was just a loss that had to happen. But on trades one, three, five, six, and let's go ahead and continue a little bit further. Trades nine and trades 14. So we'll get into all of those a little bit later, but that's the main thing that went wrong today. Just not taking profits at the proper levels. I could have had a great day if I would have been more disciplined and not been so greedy and expected more than what the market was offering. And really, I think that's the biggest lesson out of all of this. You have to analyze what the market is doing. You have to see how much the market is offering you for your trade. And then based on the market scenario, if it makes sense that that's all that the market is really going to give you, then go ahead, take your profits. Whether, whether or not you're above what your average profit would be or below it, if it makes sense, take the profit. It's all good. So that was the biggest mistake right there. And that's exactly what happened on trade six. 
Now trade six, this was one of my best entries of the day. I went long as prices came back to retest the higher low. So I followed my strategy. I traded with the trend from the lowest possible prices, the best prices I could get into, but I just didn't exit the right way. And when it comes to trades, you need three things and you need all three of these. You can't have two out of three or one out of three. You need one, a good entry. You need two, good management while that trade is open. And you need three, a great exit once it's time to get out of that trade. So I had two out of three, but that's just not good enough. I got to have all three of those. And that's what I'm going to work on getting better at tonight. So then we come back to trade seven. Now on trade seven and eight, these were just some bad trades that I could have avoided, I believe, because I went long right here on seven and eight, believing that a lower, excuse me, believing that a higher low would be formed. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. So for one, you don't want to anticipate a higher low being formed. You want to see a higher low get formed and then trade based off of that. You never want to jump in front of a higher low, especially in a market like today where it's up moves and down moves. You got to really stay on your toes and anticipation is not what you want. You want reaction. That's what you want to do. So that's first and foremost when it comes to trade number seven, trying to jump in front of the higher low too early. And then also I ignore this lower high that got created once we bounced off the top of the zone now if you really look at it this was a double top that we made at the top of the zone that was followed by a lower high that more likely than not is usually going to lead to a down move now how far that down move goes you just got to see with each market scenario that you trade but the probabilities for lower prices are definitely increased when you see a double top with a lower high so for me to ignore that lower high right there was just being a little bit too stubborn and a little bit too married to the uptrend. You know, the trend is the trend and you always want to trade with that, but you don't want to just blindly trade with the trend when you're in a pullback. So that's the biggest lessons right there at trade seven and eight. Don't get, you know, too excited in the pullback and try and go against the overall trend. And also don't try and jump in front of a higher low. You want to make sure that you react and you don't anticipate. So that's seven and eight right there. So then we come back to trade number nine. Let's get those notes. So I went short here after seeing multiple lower highs off of that bear trend line right there that we were just talking about. And then, so I went short after seeing multiple lower highs as well as prices coming back to test the bear trend line. So that right there is a perfect entry for me. I'm seeing lower highs. I have a bear trend line that's drawn. I wait for prices to come back to retest the trend line. I'm patient and I'm disciplined. I enter at the best possible prices. So I had those two things. I had good entry and a good trade management while the trade was open. But it's that exit that was really kicking my butt today. And if you look at trade nine, this was a perfect trade. Great entry. Prices came all the way back down to retest the top of the zone almost to the wick. Like that's as perfect as it could get. So for me to not take profits right there, that's just being way too greedy. And I think, well, I mean, the only thing I can really say is that I had the wrong mindset. And I think last week, that was one of the biggest things I learned now that I'm looking back on it, which is, yeah, you can have big weeks in the market, but don't expect for that to continue. Always come into the market and expect to get your regular profit target. Now, if the market offers you more, you take more. But if the market offers you less, you take less. And if it offers you just enough, you take that too. So that's the biggest, biggest lesson I learned. You got to adapt to what the market is giving you. Don't trade what you think it should be. Trade what you're actually seeing and what it really is. So that's what I learned right there on trade nine and what I've been learning throughout this entire session, really. So then we move on to trade 10. This is my best trade of the day. I think my my only trade that was actually profitable and not either a loss or a break even so that's a good thing i i went long right here after prices came back to retest a higher low so that's pretty much the strategy i've been using all day because when you're in an uptrend that's usually the one of the best entry points or entry methods that you could possibly use because you're trading in line with the trend from a major level of support which increases your chances of having a great trade and with this one i just held my trade to the target and I took profit when it got there and I didn't get greedy. I could have made more on this trade, yes, but I learned from all of my previous nine trades that if I'm gonna do anything, 
let me just take profit on at least one good trade so i was able to do that on trade 10 and that kind of got my confidence back a little bit because before that i was just kind of i wouldn't say completely just frustrated but i was a little bit disappointed in my performance throughout those nine trades so trade 10 kind of just made me realize that hey if you do the right things and follow your plan this is what could happen but um yeah after that I don't know where that motivation went because trades 11 through 14 was none of that. But let's go ahead and break them down anyway. So 11 through 13, I went long here doing an uptrend, but my entry was a little bit too high. Now, this is where I started to kind of move away from my trade mechanics that I'm used to. A lot of these trades that I took from earlier were great entries. I just had bad exits. The only two things that went wrong were really trade seven and eight. Those deviated from my plan. But the other seven trades that I took all followed my trading plan, including trade 10. So that's seven out of 10. But 11 through 13 is just really just bad management. You don't want to go high, even though you know the uptrend is the uptrend. You still want to get into it at the best possible prices that you can find, which is usually at a higher low. So let's zoom in and actually take a good look at where I got in at. So I think my mistake was me not going low. I mean, excuse me, me not going long at this lowest higher low. Because notice how we were making a series of higher lows after we broke out of the zone right here. So this is the first higher low we established after the breakout. This is the second one. And this one is the third one. But look at how small this third one is and look at how high it is in the uptrend. If you have a higher low that's right before that, it makes more sense to aim for that second higher low because in all my years of trading, I've seen so many occasions where prices run straight past that first higher low and they come back to that second one. So if I would have went long at that second one like I was supposed to, I would have been able to avoid all of the losses that I took on trade 12 and 13 because if I would have went long right here, my stop would have never been hit and I would have eventually saw prices move up to my take profit. So that's what i mean a lot of times when i say that the small the small decisions that you make they actually play a very big role going forward in the future because you can make a mistake you know 30 minutes ago but you trying to i don't know make it back or overcompensate for that mistake and that might lead you to more mistakes in the future so in order to avoid that whole scenario you want to make sure that you make the best decisions every chance that you possibly get and then with 11 through 13 out of the way, we came to my last trade of the day, trade number 14, where I went long as prices came back to recess a higher low. So, you know, that's what I've been doing all day, continue to do that. Now, once again, just like I've been doing all day, my exit could have been so much better. Now, let's look at this one because on this trade, I knew that I should have got out, but I still didn't do it because I'm like, well, if the trend is up, shouldn't I just hold it? not necessarily not all the time if you take uh profits where you need to then you can just get back in later on if it continues without you but if it doesn't guess what you just locked in your profit so you're still good no matter what so that's why you got to always lock it in but on 14 i went long as prices came back to retest this little call it a little micro higher low right here after we created this double bottom so double bottom one double bottom two we come up pull back create that higher low so as soon as prices came back that's where i went long at 14. now my only problem was i saw this entire candle close on its highs and i was like hmm if we don't see follow through on the next candle then that's going to be very interesting and that's exactly what happened we didn't see any follow through and then we actually started moving back towards the downside so after this one red candle got printed and it closed that right there was the confirmation that this was indeed a lower high so if anything rather than letting my trade come back to break even i should have been able to get at least maybe six to seven points out of that and just walk away with something so that was my last trade for the day and i could have kept going because the market was moving but when you feel like you're out of rhythm with the market you don't want to keep pressing the issue because the market is going to be here tomorrow the next day the next week the next month and the next year so it's no rush to get profits. It's always going to be opportunity available. And if it's not the right day for you, just call it quits. So I was proud that I was able to 
be disciplined enough to just go ahead and stop right there. I'm not in the I'm not in rhythm, so it's no point in the continuing to trade further. So I would say overall the, the biggest lesson I learned today was like I've been telling you guys so far, do not get greedy when it comes to these markets. If the market is offering you whatever profit is available and it makes sense because you're at a major level of support or resistance, go ahead and take profit. If the move continues on, you can always get back in. But if the move doesn't continue, you'll be very happy that you locked in those profits. And for me, I think I was telling you guys last week how I like to build up profit trade by trade, little by little, because that builds my confidence. I would much rather take 100 profitable trades that made me $1,000 rather than take, you know, two $500 trades that made me $1,000. Because if I take those 100 trades, I'm going to be like, ooh, okay, I have my strategy, I have my plan, I know what I'm looking for, and my confidence will be very high because I know exactly what I need to come in and do. And when it comes down to it, I believe in my trading plan. You know, I think today could have been a really great day if I would have done everything that I needed to. But that's the motivation for me going forward tonight to just have a good practice session where I do what I did today, where I have good entry good trade management but the only thing that i change is that i work on having better exits for my trades that i do take that are great entry so that's my main focus for tonight and once i get that right i think i can come back tomorrow and really do well because remember if you guys didn't know we do have the fomc statement coming out tomorrow at two o'clock uh eastern standard time and then we have the press conference at 2 30. So that's going to provide a lot of volatility in the market, probably from two o'clock all the way up until the market closes at four. So it's going to be a lot of opportunity tomorrow. So if I come to the market with my best foot forward, I think I can do very well tomorrow. So even though today was a tough day, hey, man, sometimes it's like that. And when it comes to these markets, sometimes that's something you got to deal with. Nobody can be perfect all the time, but you can always strive to be your best and that's one of the uh, that's one of the things that I always try and do, and I hope you guys do too. So that's pretty much all I got. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope you learned something today about taking profits at the right level and taking entries when you have the best possible prices at the best possible level in line with the trend. So I hope you learned about that today. I'll be back tomorrow, July 26th, ready to run it back again and get these trades right. But until then, you guys, take it easy.